Before I forget, tonight, 7.30, who wants to come? It's going to be insane. Every year it's, it gets wild, more and more insane. 7.30, Binyanei Hauma. Um, I'll be there with Rav Ginsberg, with Rav Yitzhak Ginsberg, Shlita and Chilik Frank, and a few other chavra, Um in a side hall. The side hall is about 700 people, a side hall, because the main, in the main hall is uh, Avram Fried and uh, uh, Yishai Ribo and... Uh, Yonatan Razel, <laughs> those who understood, Yonatan Razel, the blindfolded. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's going to test Kislev for bringing this thing is crazy. I think the thing that I'm doing, also the book sale, that massive book sale is, takes place right in the same area. It's an amazing night. Uh, it's a very powerful evening. That's tonight in Ben I don't want to forget that. Um, also, one more thing. Thank God, the registration for the Yarech Kala has been really happening. It's really growing, and the word is getting out. And it's, so spread the word. Make sure you registered if you're not to the Chevron online also. It's really uh, the, the, the week itself with, with, with Nisim Black and Karduner, and hopefully Alex Clare will be with us a little bit too, and a few other Chevron, and the, the Rebbe of Pia Setzna in, uh, in uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh, and Rav Yaakov Meir Shech. It's going to be a, an epic week. A very strong week, so make sure we're on top of that. And uh, I didn't get back to you yesterday, but the women's trip really, really is firming up to the Ukraine either in May or in June. So if your wives want to get involved, there's already how many? What? 30. It's crazy. There are about 30 women that are seriously considering. We already started discussing tachlis, the details yesterday. So there's a lot going on on that end too. But let's go back into the one who brought us all together. Uh, well... Kodesh Baruch through the through the Rebbe of Piyasetz and Abklonim is Kalman Shapira Hashem Yikom Damo. We began this Ot uh, Ot Yud Zayin on Sunday, and at the beginning of Ot Yud Zayin, the Piyasetz and Rebbe showed us how the uh, the poison of the snake from the story of creation is still mashpi on us today, or could still be mashpi on us today. Does anyone remember what that effect of the snake was? 
The Aris of the snake, do you remember? I think it was the way we made our decisions. Well, one was in one way, I think it was, I think what we were in is the way we make our decisions. Instead of um, doing it maybe wholeheartedly, whatever that means for us, we haven't really pinned that down. I don't know, I think that all this is that, but um, uh -huh. I think the, the, the poison was the fact that we try to like, just take a pro and con look at things and just say, well, where the negatives, where the drawbacks. So if there, if there's things that are better than the drawbacks, okay, fine, I'm good to do it. No, no, no. It's coming from that that place of, of 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 it's it's like a defense thing, if anything, right? It's more, like, it's, okay, yeah, it's more, it's more good than bad. Right. right. Does so anyone remember it in their own a different way? Not that that was wrong, just in their own personal way. The eyes of the of the snake today. So Hershey was really mechavening, it's very good what he was saying is that when we look at life we're always looking at what do I get out of this, what do I become from this, or what, I don't, what don't I become from this, as opposed to experiencing life just for life itself, which would lead a, place, a person to living a life of tamimus, of wholeheartedness. The greatest example I can get to outside the world of like limud lishma, learning Torah lishma, is music. When, we've spoken about this quite often, when there's a synergy, when there's a harmony between the musicians on stage, or there's a harmony, not harmony meaning the, the, you're singing three, the third and fifth, but there's a, there's a, there's a kol timechat Hashem, you get each other between the person that's on stage and the crowd, and there's oneness there, you're not thinking anymore in terms of the nachash of who am I becoming, what am I getting from this. It's just happening. It's there. It's, there's oneness. Um, it's amazing when it happens in a band. Um, Reb Shlomo was doing this his whole life. With, he, he was able to do this on stage with five musicians that <clears throat> probably picked up the instrument they were playing the day before. And it sounded like that quite often on these recordings where the music is mamish horrible. It's unbelievable. Not, like, really, some of these recordings, they're playing completely their own chords. And, it sounds, and yet, somehow, he, he, he brought it above what people are usually like, what am I getting out of this? Is this, good? Is this doing good for me or not? And he brought them to a place of tmimus, back to that place. The nachash always comes and tells you, if you didn't determine something intellectually, you don't really know what you have. That's what it says. If you haven't categorized something and labeled it, then you don't even know what you have, so you can't say that you're with it. The way of being with something is by, is by labeling it. Tovara, it's a dat tovara. Reb Shlomo has a very long teaching in Chanukah, where he says that it's a, Chanukah is a tikkun for Chet Amiraglim and for Chava. Why? What do we say about the Chanukah candles? What can we do with the Chanukah candles? Nothing. Ein lanu reshut kishtamesh bahem ela lir otam bilvad. Where is the beginning? What is it fixing? Vatere haisha ki tov haetz lamaachal. Chava saw, she used the sense of sight to determine that this thing is good or bad. She said, I'm looking, it's good for this. Who else fell in this? The Miraglim as well. The way that they looked at Eretz Yisrael was what can we do with this, what can't we do with this? My Shabbat system, you guys completely lost. You have, you have no idea what you guys went for. That was not the purpose of going to Eretz Yisrael. The, going, the purpose of going and checking out Eretz Yisrael. That's why Kalev runs to Hebron saying, please, Abba and Ima, let me remember how to do my shlichut ne'emana. Let me be a loyal shaliach to bring back the report of not how good or how bad it is, but how much alive, how much tmimus I was when I was there in this land. I see a lot with people who try to trip up somebody who's connecting to a certain derech. And then they say, oh, well, obviously, you know, they, you've obviously studied what the Rambam has to say on that. And, and uh, like a million, just they think that's your whole basis for why you're connecting. Right. You're connecting because you're connecting. Because you're, you're connecting. You're not, you're because not you're connecting. In, uh, yeah. Because you're an Eretz Yisrael. Because you're an Eretz Yisrael. It's. I went to Gush and you know, right. I learned like that, and so I, 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 I went to America. I came to the place now. Where, no, you came no. because you connected. No. So the Rebbe is going to harp on this right now. Look at this. We're on page. We're on page uh, forty. Now he's going to. He's going <laughs> to. 
Shut this <laughs> is, he's going to bring to life something that, that my day of enlightenment, I want to share with you my day of enlightenment, I shared with you once, this was the Lakers, we're still playing in the great western form in Englewood, Englewood, California, if you guys know where that is. Do you know where the Staples Center is today? That's not where the Lakers used to play growing up that's as a South kid. South Central. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the Inglewood, that's what we used to call it. Eh? <laughs> Always up to no good. <laughs> you ever been to Inglewood, Tom? Really? Seems like you would. <laughs> Seems like you have friends there. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> is it good or bad? I don't know. It is what it is, man. <laughs> So we're, in, we're, we're watching the Lakers play the, the okay, this is going to date many of us, the Sonics. Right. Super Sonics. Huh? <laughs> right. The Gilgal. Uh, Sean. Get out of here. Get your, come back here when you know your olive base, okay? Foot <laughs> Ah, oh, now you're dating, yeah. Nate Thurmond, we're talking. Okay. Anyway, Sean just had his 48th birthday last Friday. He's number four. It was number Not, see, look at the look, look at this. Yeah, look what's coming out now. It's amazing. It's not that we know it. It's just we are it. You know? <laughs> it's, 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 we, we, we grew up. After the, the game is over, Lakers are, are it's it's, a, it's an era where Shaq's there and everything's stemming. Rodman came for one season. The whole thing was nuts. It was fun. things were on fire. And at the end of the buzzer goes off, we had a very good seat. You're the Cantor's son. You always get good seats from the Balabatim, right? We're sitting there with a few of my friends right behind the basket. And the players are going off the court after schwitzing for, you know, 48 minutes of play time and about two hours of a game, right? Two, two and a half hours of a game. And the crowd starts charging towards the area where they could maybe get a little touch off the back of Robert Ory or, or, of, or of, you know, who knows, or of Detlef Shrimp, whoever was, you know, <laughs> right? And I started running too because, hey, those people that played ball and put ba- balls into baskets, we want to touch them, right? <laughs> no. So my friend, my Israeli friend who was visiting from the army, <laughs> mayor, we were all running, he's like, he grabs me, he's like, Matam Tum Tam? <laughs> what kind of an idiot are you? I'm like, what do you mean? Now we go and get to high five them and touch them. He's like, Voila, <laughs> you gotta go back, you gotta get back home fast. And it dawned on me, I was like, wow, wait a second. Those entertainers were fantastic entertainers. Ubaze Tam Ben Islam. And it's done over there. What do we do with our intellect? The Rebbe says, when we're amazed by certain talents, we confuse that with admiration. <clears throat> with, ad- with admiring the entertainment, the source of kivyacho, so to speak, the source of entertainment, right? Now that's basically, he, he just described the whole pop culture. He described, you know, everything that was, that was, that was, that, that has confused us growing up in the era that we grew up in, right? I mean, if that's true with, 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 uh, Athletes, obviously the same deal. Tom, how many? How long were the lines after your shows? You know, back in the day, people waiting to do the create. You know, just fully losing their whole intellect and mevatling it to a musician who was able to have a good riff. Where does it come from? Shem gave us a, a, a seicha to use it for that. Yeah. That's why all the actors and actresses today have a political voice. They, they, what do they do? They get up, they do, they're, they're a great actor in a movie, and then they get up right. and they're like talking about all these political causes. Because they know, everyone, everyone will listen to them. Listens to them. Everyone, will listen, everyone listens to them. Okay, now let's go back inside. Either that or they become the president, like, 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 uh, like Ronald Reagan did, and he was a little bit of a tikkun on, on a certain level of that. He, he rose to the occasion. Now we have, you know, just a complete pawn. Absolute mamish, a pawn of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. They're always pawns, but sometimes it's more galui and more revealed. Okay, page 40. It's clear with the simple mind intellect. He's saying with a little bit of a cup, it makes sense to not be so mitpale, don't get so amazed, now he's not talking about athletes or musicians. 
He's even talking about grosa cups, meaning people with, um, you know, expansive intellect. He's saying, what do you so meet pale from them? Yesh rakalit pale ale malachu ha'el ala melachu tiyut sheba. Meaning, you can lead pale on their talent. Kmo al ochze enayim. Sheze omed al rosho veze olech al yadav. Like, you're very meet pale. How do you say meet pale? Amazed. Uh, yeah, you're very amazed. You're very impressed by, uh, he's talking about here in the, in the circus, guys that are uh, cross, you know, walking on ropes, you know, doing handstands on ropes, whatever, like closing their eyes. And you're meet pale from the, the, the talent is very impressive. You're mit pale from them, but you're not mevatling yourself before them. Right? You're able to say, "Wow, that's a really cool thing." But it's not like let's marry, let's 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 set this, let's set the dancer, right? Let, let, let's set up that guy that could down, that could juggle three midgets on his on his elbow and set up with my daughter. That's not something that like I'm going to say. Why? Because that's a talent. That was that. Is it? But what happens to us? He's saying over here something very interesting. We never have that feeling of amazement. More than the talent when it comes to people acting in a circus that are performing a certain talent. When are we amazed and when were we really impressed and subdue our dat when it comes to the rationale, when it comes to the in- people that are groisa cups, into, to, into the intellect, there we do find ourselves, you know, run, basically completely nullifying ourselves before the intellect of other people. Now this is so hard for for a certain <coughs> world that that many of us live in because we are very <coughs> impressed by by dot right but where why what I was saying why why don't we, why aren't we just impressed by that that's a wow very interesting that's amazing but i we, we were saying why aren't you so much more impressed with someone who teaches you how to go beyond that why aren't you completely immersed and nullified before the someone who brings you to a state of, of quiet, of ashkata, of, of going inside, hafnama, going inside, beyond the tovara? We're so, mamash, oh my God, before people that know how to juggle, do mental gymnastics, we're completely subdued to them, before them. It blows us away. Why, the Rebbe says. It's just a talent. The person that brings you to the place of tamimus, that goes beyond the dot. That's the, that's the energy, that's the world you want to go before and say, this is what I want to about to myself before. Now, why don't we usually act like that? Like, what prevents us? Or why, why are we generally much more impressed by mental gymnastics than a guy that will come and teach us how to go inside our heart for, and have some quiet for a few that's minutes? That's what the world's impressed by. That's what he keeps on saying over here. Saying, you have no idea the, na- the snake has such an achiza on you, you don't even, you're not even worth, you don't even realize it. How much of what the world is into, before you even decided if you're into it or not, you're into it. You're there. Plus, I think we can, we can associate a, a level of work that it took. You know, if someone's got this high intellect, you know that they've been learning Torah or whatever since they were kids and they grew up and they just put, and we associate the, the value to the amount of time it took them to acquire that, that knowledge. Well, but here he's not referring to Torah, though, yet. He will, I think. Here it's more just, you Aaron know. Barak. What's that? Aaron Barak. Mm-hmm. Like the great professor, judge, We're in a, sh- we're in a shul. Oh, okay. so no, I'm kidding. Like, yeah, that's our lovers, the intellectuals. Okay. These are the professors. Uh, so, I, so what does that mean? I must what? It must mean that I should. Go if I tell. Yeah. Yeah. Naor. That's like olam ha naor. Like the, yeah. Okay, let's go back inside. Le Mashal. You see that sixth line from the top? Yeah. Okay, Le Mashal. I'm just saying, Jamie, you know that Reb Shlomo wouldn't mention Rabin's name in a shul after Oslo, right? Like, like certain Inyan where it's becoming really clear and clear. Yesh Churban v'yesh Binyan Am Yisrael, you know? Mamash, like, it's very clear. Le Mashal. Ha'ish choker b'sichlo acharei peulat keivato. What's a keiva? Does anyone know? Intestines, the stomach, right? The digestive system. So you're saying a person can investigate in his mind after the, the process of how a stomach works, how a stomach operates. To know it and to understand the process. 
אשר כבר נראית אותם שבשקר יסודם. A lot of theories regarding the digestive system and the way the stomach operates have already come up and crumbled in the past. והרבה מהם שנחשבים עתה עוד לאמיתים, גם עליהם יעבור הכוס. And even a lot of theories that currently he's speaking in 1920s, that right now seem to be, you know, shayach, these two, he says, amazing, what bito, huh? He's saying, this too, what everyone thinks now to be the way that things work, will pass as well. Right? There'll be more chidushim uh, in the future too, regarding the things that we are certain are the way that, that you know, explain everything. <laughs> what a bitul hadas, he's, like he's speaking about. He's saying, like, what we think to be the way now, don't worry, there'll be more chidushim, it'll prove to us. He's the healer in the He was giving out prescriptions, remember? People came to him for medical advice as well. And somehow he had this... Did you read that in the book, Tom? That somehow he had this... He had this um, permission from the Polish government to fill out prescriptions. He wasn't a doctor, but he had this... Uh, he had this authority. Even the Polish officials would come to him. They trusted him. They trusted his dads. But this is... I mean, this is true even today. Absolutely. When you, when, from a medical standpoint, when you're looking at, you know, at, at medicine today, you know, they say that um, when you're in medic, when you, from when you start medical school to when you end, 50% of what you learn will be incorrect by the time you finish. And, uh, uh, you know, this is, it, it's the people who you know, say, you know, but this is the way we've always done it, that are the people who are getting left behind, the people who are right. the, respectfully, the physicians you don't want to, you don't want to see, right. because you're always stuck in the, but that's the way I learned, because... Right. If I learned it, it has to be right. And it's, it's the... Right. It's not just, not just physicians. Teachers. Yeah, I was going to say, substitute the word with rabbis. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. I'm too... I cannot... If I admit that what I know now isn't necessarily the, the eternal emes, what does it say about my emes now? Right? What does it say? How can I, how can I deal with my, my, my limitation now? Reb Shlomo once said, it's very nice to respect the dentist that, that was a brilliant dentist in the, in, the in the beginning of the 19th century. But when it comes to pulling your own children's teeth out, would you dare take your child to that dentist? He says, that's what we do with chinuch sometimes. Reb Yachim Mereshachter's story with uh, the teacher who was beating his kids. Did I tell you the story? No, I don't think so. It ties in because we've been talking about him so much lately. Of Yaakov Meir. Yeah, that there was a Mechane who was hitting his kids. Right. And it came, came you know, the, the, they brought it to Rav Yaakov Meir and he asked to meet the Mechane. Uh -huh. And he came and said, I understand you're hitting your kids. He says, yeah. He says, why? He says, my father was a Mechane. He hit his kids. My grandfather was a Mechane. He hit his kids. Okay. By the time the guy got home, There were Hasidim loading up his, a truck with his refrigerator, his washer dryer, his oven. And he said, what's going on? He says, they said, the Rebbe sent us here. So he went back to Rebbe Akramer and he said, what's going on? He said, no, you said you do things like your father and your grandfather. Your father didn't have a, a washer dryer. Your grandfather didn't have an oven. <laughs> That's good. Be'od eze zman yitchatshu chidushim. There'll be chidushim that'll show that what we think to be the emes is not. Ve'yitzchaku gam al otan vadayut medumot shebiyameinu ele. And they'll look back at all those things that we were certain to be vaday and they'll laugh at it. Right? So now he goes back to the stomach. Ve'im gam akeba yodat la'avod rak al yedei sikhliim alal? Now he goes back. Now listen to what he says here. Does the stomach know how to operate on its own because of the seich, because of the intellects? Because of the intellectual understanding of how a stomach operates? It does its job without making noise in the tumult. Pilpul pil -pul is a, you know, a pilpul. Like a, when you're learning, a pilpul is like a shaklavataria back and forth. The whole mental gymnastics. בביטחון וידיעה ודאית. The way a stomach pump works, it works with ביטחון and with certainty. בלא השערות, without assumptions. בידיעה שאין ספק, ימין ושמאל, טוב ורע. 
It doesn't work with, oh, our stomach's good or our stomach's not good. Our stomach's a nice thing to work on. No, it, it's, it's, it's focused. It's exactly. Mipnei sheyesh ba mit, why? Mipnei sheyesh ba metziut chiyut shehashem samba. It's operating based on the chiyus that Hashem put into it. Into the, into the active organism of the way a stomach functions. <laughs> Now you'll come and tell me, okay, that's a stomach, right? How can you say that about man? Makesha, that's how a stomach works. What about the way the man works? Now look what he says. A stomach doesn't have to be moved and guess and assume where it is. A stomach doesn't have to feel around and guess and assume where it is like a blind man in the dark has to figure out where he is. Yediyah below pilpulim. It's, it, it knows how to function without all the pilpul, It's a, a pure way of looking and of, and of thinking and of wisdom. You start out that way. It's babies. Nachon. Nachon. It knows how to operate with tmimus in the stomach. Without the... Um, would you say this without like, huh? Would you say Yishai? Confusion. Yeah. Confusion. With, with, without without getting confusing, without chakira, without investigating what's the right way to work. Since the intellect, right, doesn't have this way of thinking. <coughs> He has, he has to, he, oh, because the, the seichel of man thinks that's for dummies to, to live like that. I have to come up with theories and figure things out all the time. What ends up happening to us? We keep on getting stuck in thorns. We keep on going around and round and round in our minds without working with tmimus and we get stuck all the time. All the time. Now he says, Sometimes you happen to stumble upon, you know, emes, or the realness of life. Sometimes. But sometimes you, you, you completely descend, tank, you know, completely down like, like, a, uh, like a blind person. And even at the time where you know you reached a certain negiyah of emet, it just happened to be that you stumbled upon emes. It's not a real emes dick and not knowledge. Now he says here, It's saying everything he said now for chapters, if only all men, all people, would live with pashtus and tmimus and emuna which means that your soul is revealed when you live like that with wholeheartedness, when you stop getting so complicated in your mind, when you tell the snake, just shut up for a second. I don't have to keep on determining good or bad and working like that and living my life with this kind of world of cheshbonos. My soul becomes revealed. Mitziut ve'emet. You're living a real life. You've come in touch with reality and with truth. Ki az... You will then experience and feel and see life with utmost certainty. The nachash is suffix, it's a malik. When your soul is revealed, your bilbulim ceases to exist in that moment. Lo al yede gishush b'choshech and not by like wandering around in the dark trying to feel your way around. Shenikra Seichel. Do you already said here? We already called the intellect here? The last line? What did he call the intellect? What does that mean? Gishush Bachoshech. He's saying that? He's saying that's the intellect. In Ashkata, my soul becomes revealed. And how do you pull yourself? It's not even positive. See, you're still talking about positive and, and negative. No, no, it's it just, just you're right, is. You're right. right, it just is. Right. Now, when you observe your thoughts, you can start laughing at them. 
You can't laugh at your thoughts while you're thinking about them. When you observe your thoughts and you're not in them, you're looking at them like, this is what's determined for me what's good and what's bad? Am I crazy? This is how I think about people? Bezrat Hashem, that's hopefully a, uh, you know, it's nice to chuck a bunch of them. Like yesterday I was sitting in the studio with a very close friend of mine who is so stuck. He has so much baggage up here and it's prevented him from putting out a, a real album in years because of all the difference, what will be of this, I got to think things through. That's what people say about mature people, you know, think things through, tvach haroch, thinking long term, this and that. Meanwhile, all the creativity and all the expression of who he really is, is has been completely clogged for years and years while he thinks that he's acting maturely. He's certain that what he's coming up with is truly a very responsible and mature way of figuring out life. When really that seichel, that way of working with seichel, has led him to be like a person like this. That's what the PSS is saying. Where am I? <coughs> and we think though, what do we call that world? In light, the in light, haskala, right? We, that's where the world refers to it, ha'olam hana'or, ha'tarbuti. He's stuck trying to think in a way where he's trying to conform to what other people expect him to be thinking. Always. What does he want Always. himself? Who is he? Now, to go back, a very important thing right now. Is the Rebbe saying that intellect is evil? No. So we have to keep on going back there. What is evil about the intellect? There is an evil to it. What is the evil about the intellect? That it ends there. That this is the end, exactly. That this is it. The supremacy. Absolutely. Which is the way that we have mevat. And that's really what's happened with so much of the world. And, I, and obviously, we're ta I'm talking more about the, you know, right for, for, for us, I'm speaking about the Jewish world, that I'm with the rest of the world. Sundays, we, so we spoke about that, that wacky family. What was their name? Kardashians. Kardashians. Forget about them. That's avadai absolute. So, talking about like even even in our lives, right? So, what would a davening of like this feel like? You wouldn't be doing any cheshbonos in your davening whether it's working or not. That's one thing. You wouldn't compare the power of your what you're feeling to yesterday's tefillah. You wouldn't be thinking about what you have to do later today. You would fully be feeling alive while your soul is being revealed to you, living the tefillah, talking to your Creator. Tmimus and pshitus. See, this is like one of just Rav Shlomo's teachings of the sechel being a goshesh b'choshech. Are we going to live life by the tree of knowledge, of good and evil? Or are we going to live by the tree of life? It's like, those are the two options here. Maybe yeah. we can be in the dot, tov the ra, and we're lost in the intellect, and we're lost in the dot, and the tov and the ra. Or we can try to like live it like it's a chayim. And what, what's the result of that? Now, what's the result of living it like that? So let's go back to... Um, Listen to the words. Next word. Yeah. Brings me to a place that I come to a state of gratitude. What happens to me when that's the way I live? Everything becomes a mer everything feels like it's a miracle. I see the miracles in everything. We learned that song. Gratitude. Oh, remember that? Yeah. We have to go back to that. Thanks for reminding me. Yishai. It's not like a... There's a, there's a, there is a return to responsibility. Yes, using the mind to... It's not, it's not, it's not, we're, not, we're not talking about total... That's why I said right. the right. intellect, well, that's why exactly what I preface by saying the intellect is not evil. What we've done with it is evil. <clears throat> the way that that has been, that has become so much more a determining factor of who I am is, is toho. But mabito. It's a means, but it's not the end. And yeah. when it's the end, Zaxof. Because, for example, the stomach, there's a, right. beauty, there's a beauty and truth to trying to find out how the stomach works. With Bitu. Hashem wants us to right. find out. 
with with bitul and anava. Right, but because of with sechel chakira. Right. He as long as do, that's not research. the end. But the stomach itself, no matter how much we come to understand the way it works, the stomach itself, there's no cheshbon that it's able to do. It just right. is. <laughs> right, it just is. But they're using as an example, it's a mushal. The stomach's the mushal. But, but, but what is he, why is he bringing that mushal for us? What do you think? Like, why did he dafka say, not the stomach, but why is he using any organ, and then what is he telling us about like, the organ, <coughs> about so ourselves? Don't allow your free will to poison because who you really are functions on a certain level just like the stomach functions the from the chiyas from Hashem. Didn't he teach us about the plant? Yeah, absolutely, and he's going and he's going to go back to it in a second. He's saying that if the stomach stopped to think about what it was doing, it wouldn't be able to function. I'm just right. Stomach stopped to think. Is this right or wrong? Right. But you want that back? I can't. I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. Wait, her, shh, guys. I want to hear. Or what are you putting into your mind? That's, that's the deal with the stomach. It, the, the stomach's irrelevant to what it goes in it. It just functions. So the right. mind should be the same way. Huh. We should get to a point where, regardless of what goes in it, the opposite works. It works more directly. Regardless of what goes in it. Well, how come that's not the way we... Because uh, uh, yeah, yeah. we try to strategize around and try to say, well, if I do this and that, somehow I'll change what's coming in. But the truth of it is, what's coming in is coming in, brother. You know, it's coming. <laughs> and either you can strategize and say, if I just do this, oh, yeah. the next thing that comes in is going to be better. You, you're you're dieting, dieting, it never works like that, does it? We you have, have like a clear diet and, 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 and then the donut shows up. And you're like, I'll just really exercise really hard and it will just all go away. Right. It never just all goes It'll away. It'll be like your donut and like a salad will cancel each other out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not don't it doesn't work on the stomach for It's don't take that learning and say, and try and figure out things from it. Don't say, it doesn't oh, own, it doesn't own the situation. Oh, the mind doesn't own it. Own. Right, it's not, it's not the ultimate truth. You have to be on love. But I just, I, I rebel against the, the concept that this is where we go totally. I like the, which, the narrow Hanukkah, there's a time for that. Shabbat, there's a time for that. There's a time for that. There's also time for the other Rishut to take over and to say, okay, let's, let's, let's chop this down. Let's figure this out. Let's, let's understand it. Be on love. So, you, so you're, you're assuming that a person has the mm-hmm. tools to just go there with anava, without without making sure this is crystal clear to you. For really saying, though, you'll en sikui. For today, but then tomorrow. <laughs> en sikui. If in this is the basis for the way the person has to think in the world, you're going to be thinking, brother. It's going to be coming at you all day long. But if my basis is crystal clear that this is. Then I can think. But it has to be clear, clear, clear to me. Because I keep on getting caught in that traps and I have to be reminded all the time. Look, the thinking, you're never going to stop to think. But it's very easy to stop having your soul be revealed. Have you ever been to a doctor that said, right off the bat says, look, Hashem is the healer, and I'm here to... A fuch. I, I've I, said, have I, you ever been to a doctor? No. I have. And it's the no, most, like, no. that's, that's the most incredible doctor feeling. No. Like the guy, when you walk into an office... You know, it's a struggle. The guy will say to you, look, Hashem is the healer, I'm just... And like immediately you feel like there's a totally different... No, I had, I had an opposite experience. I, mean, I was going to say this in the beginning, but I didn't want to... I was nervous because <laughs> Stephen's in the room. Um, I walked into a... <laughs> but Isha brought it up, so it's fine. I, I, I walked into a doctor, one of the Kapot Cholim here a few years ago. Well, actually, like seven, eight years ago, our first year of marriage. And um, I walked into the doctor, and the doctor heard my... Uh, I walked inside, he said to me... Um, I said, uh, really, how do you know? He's like, I heard your cough in the, in the uh, waiting room, right? So I, I don't know what happened, but Cohen showed up. So I said to him, Now I understand why he looked at me. He was a smart guy. <laughs> he looked at me. He, um, he, he wanted to grab my neck and throw me out of there at that moment. Like, there's a. Uh, hey, by the way, he was complete. Just a. But he had me on the wrong medication for three weeks. It was completely wrong. It wasn't pneumonia. It was um. Uh, what do you call it when you're? Bronchitis. Uh, no, it was um with the blood. It was uh. No, I forgot. Not hyper. Hypo. Completely not pneumonia. Okay. <clears throat> Pneumonia. 
there were uh, you go for it, brother. Godolim in the world of behavioral um, economics, Kahneman and Tversky, famous guys, yeah. Israeli guys, and they did a study. They were really into like finding ways that doctors mess up. Right. <laughs> Sorry, doctor. Um, because it's easy to pick on a doctor because they, they're so important. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's only why, yeah. That they, they did a study, they said, who's a better diagnosis? Who, who comes up with better diagnoses? The, the, first year medi- the first year medical student or the doctor that you saw who probably had been doing it for 30 years? Right. And it's the first year medical student because he hasn't let his seichel get in the way of what it actually says in the book. This guy didn't even get a chance to go through the right. first year medical student wouldn't have the chutzpah to say you have pneumonia. He'd give you the full arrangement of tests as he's trained to do so. Right. So it's the same for us. It's like we've got the you've got the template. No, and then the seichel comes in and says like we've all made aliyah. We're all that was like the least rational thing to do. The intellect wanted to tell you you're out of your mind. What do you mean you're you're leaving you know you're leaving your comfort and everything no. that you have. You're out of your mind. No, you have to, and the whole world around you is saying the same thing. Even the Jewish world, right? Is saying the same thing. No, it's Mel Cheshbon. Tell that that Mel Cheshbon yeah, story, yeah. right? The, I, I haven't been able to. The Cheshbonos don't work out. I, I want to just touch on what you just said. Yeah, I also because I think all of us here are dying to rip you into pieces after what you said. <laughs> No, 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 in a, ho- in a holy way, and then, and then rebuild again. I, know, I just wanted to mean, because he said, there's time for Hanukkah, there's a time right. for Shabbos, and I don't think that's the right approach. I think that each time Yoshev O'Alim, he was Tamim from the very beginning, and then in that place of Tamimut, Hakira, 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 we got to do this, with you. but the base... Masha Malti, can, 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 can. So that's, if that's the fundamentals. But then you can, can, on top of that, add Komine Tachbulot, but then that's the thing. What's, 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 what's the threat? What's the, what's the threat? That you're not Tamim with yourself. No, the threat, the threat is that there's actually another side, which is Hashem wants us. The threat is that you become, you go into that so much that you become this kind of passive creature, but Hashem says, no, 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 I, 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 the horror, right? I want you to to reveal the secrets of this world. Right? I want you right. to figure this stuff out. I've, I've like put little secrets in this world, figure them out. My parents are both scientists, but they always they always right. told me science is the study of how Hashem created this world. That's the way they understood it. Okay, you realize that's rare. That wasn't. That's not the way usually you know normal homes of two scientists would raise their children. Right. That's Baruch Hashem. That's a that's a matana. That's not the norm. Ashrecha. That's not the norm. It's not the way the Torah of science has been given over to the world. But it's also saying, like, even when you think you figured things out, you need to leave yourself open right. to realize that Nahum. the way you understand things today Nahum. may change tomorrow. That's what, exactly what you said. Now, the threat, though, I just want to say something. The fear that many people have when they learn something like this, and they say, you know, in the lines what you were saying, Anti-intellectual you're going to end up being just a passive creature, right? I don't know anyone that learned the Torah, of, the, of this kind of Torah, with tefillah, that ended up like that. And I From far, it's that fear. We look at, I don't know anyone that's ever ended up like this. People that started from a place of intellect chose to chuck it and ended up, but that fear is always there because it's, because I need to still chuck it it's a little bit. But, but I, but I also think that the, Meaning because I, as long as I'm saying, as long as I say, no, no, you still have to hold on to it and the fear is you're going you're gonna to get lost, it's, it's, sometimes it's coming from a place of my soul, I, I haven't tasted it enough myself. See, if I tasted it enough myself that my soul, my soul being revealed in this world and feeling like I'm functioning like the stomach functions with tamimus, then I would be less scared for the person that's going to, I think, become a passive Shlomazel. Because I don't think that's actually going to happen to me. I believe in the experience. But don't you also think that in the world, of, I mean, I, I perceive also that, that people become extremely passive in the world of the intellect, right? Go to every university and there's mm-hmm. 500 kids sitting there and they become completely passive to the professor because they're so intimidated and afraid that they can't keep up on the intellectual plane that they completely become passive. Because they're afraid to let that inner self of them say, wait a second, this just doesn't sound right. I can't argue that this book says this and this guy said that, but I can tell you it doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel right. 
Why don't they say that? Because they're intimidated by the intellectual the whole structure. world is there to worship. They're intimidated. Them. Think yeah. about a Torah discussion. Think if if you didn't grow up in the Torah world and you don't know all the right words and you don't right. know all right. the right things to say and you don't know who to quote, you don't know who to that. And there's this big thing happening and something inside of you is saying, "Wait, that doesn't make sense." You very rarely are going to chime up and say, "Because you can't say that this guy said that and this guy and I can't refute you over there and do this." So I think that the world of intellect at times can create great. Passivity and that, that okay. passive. But I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about people where we are. I was not referring to them. I'm asking us. For me, the phrase is On the one hand, I want you to be aggressively out there and use this thing to 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 get out there and figure it out and push the story in. On the other hand, I want you to be tamim and. Hainu ha'achishai, the gamre. I think that the f- the focus. He, this like we're all gonna. In a few minutes, leave this bubble, and we're going to be mamish darts of dot all day longer. In the right. Co- right? right? Like, but if my anchor is checking in with this, right, and that this is this is what my this is my fall not my fallback my fall up to whatever you want to call it. As yeshli sikui li talech im Hashem, you know, or lifnei Hashem even, right? Like Reb Shlomo's whole Torah, it says, "But Noach et Elokim li talech Noach." Avram Avinu, it says, That's a whole time meaning. With Noach, he walked. Avram Avinu is even going beyond nature. Our way of then dealing with the next, how many hours till we go to sleep tonight? 14, whatever it is. How many hours it is? Our way of even focusing and managing for the next, God knows how long, is to say this I want my soul to be revealed some, at some point during the day today. Not just while I'm davening, and not just when I'm learning. All right, so how do, how do I have a chance of that? I'm going to be on the phone with numbers, people, travel agents. This, uh, my anchor. Huh? This is my yesod. This is my yesod. The, the, no, no, and the Rebbe then had to deal with people after giving shmuz, and what, he wasn't talking to people all day long? Of course he was. But this is my anchor. This is my, this is the way I want to begin to. I want to continue to train my thought, and to stop having my intellect dictate to me who I am, how I feel, what do I think about people. I had enough of living like that. I'm 37. I'm 67. Doesn't matter. At any age, I'm done with that. I'm 38. Birthday boy. Whatever it is. Enough. Enough is enough. Um, but he says, if you stop and realize, what are you impressed from during the day? Like tonight, if you took account of things that impressed you today, right? Check to see what actually you were impressed by today. What you were hitpaleta uh, from, what you were found yourself wondrous from. And that's how you get to see, you know, where are you holding with this whole game? What really Im- actually moved you, impressed you? How many times did you want to run and touch Shaq's sweaty back? Right? <laughs> like... You know, whatever the equivalent, whatever the equivalent of that, of that really is. Um, and I think that, like, you know, when we start the day with the Alter Rebbe, like we did, and then we dive in and we learn, we learn the PSS, and it's not like, oh, we're good now, right? I, but I feel like we have a chance now. The tools. Yeah. We have a cha- more, more of a chance. But it's not like, okay, now I can go into the world and not worry. It's, it's the rechecking. Now, by the way, with the women's here, and we, 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 it's, it's crazy. Talk about being repetitive. And, and well, with this, there's a line in this sefer that we're learning that I keep on trying to jump over it because I just feel like the woman will get just get so turned off by it. But I, it keeps on coming back inside every every time I think I get over it. And that's that he says that if we were real about life, this is in the beloved Mishkan Evna. If we were real about life, once we discovered the purpose of life, we would write it down on a piece of paper, put it in our pocket, and look at it every 15 minutes. No. Right? Every, every, all, all, the, all the books about self. Nachon, Nachon. Write it down, look at it. Right, right. No one, no one wrote it down. Uh, we, we even discovered what the purpose of life was in this year, by the way, just letting you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we discovered the purpose of life. And we, we were exploring the concept of dvekus, what it means to be davuk devik to Hashem. Took two months of just discovering that world of dvekus. And he said, if it was real, you'd look, you'd put it in your pocket 
in the beginning, every 15 minutes. Now, why don't we do that? Because then, then, be, then it'd be so superficial and shallow. I have to look into my pocket to remember what the, what the purpose of life is. I want to know it. I want to have a yediyah. I just want to know it. So one of the tools that we are trying to really establish here as a very real thing is a chabura that the friendships look, that our, that our WhatsApp group never gets involved with, with shtuyot. That it's about like Torah's day. What was you sent out? You sent out yesterday. Show your, your thing. They say it. Go back and forth. The rest of those beeps are garbage. The rest of the, that beeping, that beeping, not the red, not all of it, but 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 ninety percent of it is, is. I heard Miriam removed himself from all WhatsApp groups, and the girls wanted to know about like to let word out. Now they said, oh, we actually have to call her and tell her. That's like. You know, Having conversations. Having conversations. Okay, anyway, we're going to be there for each other more and more and bring us back to this place of Tmimus hopefully more and more and more. Ashreinu. <laughs>